All right, a new era of Disney animation. We're done with the Silver Age, now we're moving into the Bronze Age, also known as the Transitional Age, also known as the Dark Age. Let's not kid ourselves with that. This was a pretty dark time for Disney animation. That's not to say there weren't any good movies in this era, but uh, this is not the best start. Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel. This is my review for The Aristocats, which is the first Disney movie without Walt's involvement. The first Disney film in the 70s, it came out in 1970, just one year before the opening of The Magic Kingdom in Florida, and is once again directed by Wolfgang Reitherman. The movie takes place in the 1910s in Paris, France, even though there is not a single French character in this entire movie. The movie follows Duchess and her three kittens who are under the ownership of uh, Madame, whose name is actually too complicated to pronounce. I don't even think, I'm sure they say it in the movie, but I just can't remember at the moment. Anyway, the owner starts up her will and has decided to leave everything in her possession to her cats. What? Her butler overhears the entire conversation and he plots a scheme to pretty much kidnap the cats and kill them because he's put in second place in terms of inheriting her fortunes. So Duchess and her three kittens are stranded somewhere out there in France and thanks to an alley cat named Thomas O'Malley, he guides them back to Paris uh, and that's the movie. And it's, uh, I'm not gonna just beat around the bush, it's pretty lame. And the weird thing is, this was a movie that I watched a lot as a kid. I remember I had the VHS tape. And this was one of the Disney movies that I'm not going to say it was on a loop, but I certainly watched it a lot for a period of time. And re-watching this movie as an adult, I just want to time travel 20 years in the past to see my younger self and go, what were you thinking? Okay, I wouldn't do that because that's child abuse, but um, you get the point. I would just be confused at why I like this movie a lot because it's just, it's not terrible, it's not offensive or anything, well, minus this. <laughs> um, God, I, I'm just gonna say that right now. When this moment came up, uh, I really, just like with all the other racist stereotypes in Disney animation, uh, went, God damn it. <laughs> That's all I'll say about this. But the movie is just so bland. Uh, there's nothing to really grab your interest. The animation is kind of ugly. This is the same animation style that has been utilized for the past three movies, 101 Dalmatians, Sword in the Stone, and The Jungle Book. The Jungle Book looked a lot more polished, but this looks really rough. You can see the little lines that just disappear and reappear whenever the characters are animated. It just doesn't really leave much wonder to it. The characters are kind of forgettable. Duchess is just that very nice motherly figure. The three kittens are just your precocious, obnoxious little kids. Thomas O'Malley is just that cool alley cat. Although I like how he's accepting that Duchess has kittens rather than going, oh, you have kids. What? I know that's something that doesn't happen in animated movies, it's just something people make fun of, but I like how he's very open to the kittens and that he kind of acts as their father figure. The songs are okay. Once again, it's done by the Sherman Brothers, which not one of their best works. And much like with the Jungle Book, the most famous song in the movie, Everybody Wants to Be a Cat, was not written by them. Huh, that's bizarre that two Disney animated movies in a row, the most iconic song is not written by one of the most iconic songwriting duos in their history. The last thing I really have to mention in terms of just things that don't work is Edgar. He's probably the worst Disney villain out there because his plan is just to kidnap cats and kill them so he can inherit this uh, woman's fortune when she dies. Now in Edgar's defense, the idea of a woman leaving her entire fortune to her cats is just, that, that's the epitome of a cat lady right there. I mean, you take a look at the cat lady from The Simpsons. Yeah, she's crazy, she's covered with cats. I mean, she throws cats at people for God's sakes. But this woman right here is just a different type of crazy cat lady. It's just, she has a bunch of money to hide up the fact that she's crazy. I don't have much else to say about this movie. The most amusing thing about the Aristocats, 
ironically, are the two dog characters. Whenever the dogs appear, they constantly chase Edgar, give him hell, and those scenes are just so over the top and ridiculous that I can't help but laugh. And uh, that's very, very, very ironic that the dogs in a movie about cats would be the best part of it. Although there is one thing about these two dogs that bugged me. Why does one of the dogs pull rank on the other? Why do they talk back and forth as if they're an army patrol? I notice this with all the movies that Wolfgang Reitherman has directed involving animals. They do this with 101 Dalmatians. They do it again in The Jungle Book. I'm not sure why he's constantly doing this in his movies. Whatever, uh, it's, it's an okay movie. I mean, I'd never watch it again. If you have kids, there's several other Disney movies that you can see, so I really can't recommend it. Don't waste your money. It's not that interesting. The songs are kind of okay. The characters are bland. The villain's weak. Considering Disney's obsession with live action remakes, if they ever get to a point where they remake the Aristocats, we know they've hit rock bottom in terms of imagination, but we haven't hit that mark yet, so time will tell. And there you go, that's my review for the Aristocats. Not the best start to the Bronze Age of Disney animation. Next week we'll be moving on to something I hope better, because like with most of the movies in the Bronze Age, I haven't seen them from beginning to end, Robin Hood. We'll see what happens, but it seems like a lot of people have fond memories of this movie more than the Aristocats. So I will keep my hopes up until I see the movie. But now I want to know what you guys think about the Aristocats. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one. Hello everyone, I just wanted to say thank you all for watching my review for the Aristocats. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button for notifications. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, go check out my Twitch channel, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day and take care of yourselves.